I'm not a rock star, and I certainly don't profess to be. I live a very normal life, and I come from a very normal family. But these two worlds exist completely separately. And the hardest part is tying them together. Two thousand and fifteen was a roller coaster year for Mark Knight, with one of the busiest touring schedules in the scene, a twenty-person strong record label to run, a commitment to monthly music releases, and a young family. The challenge for Mark was fitting this all in. Alongside this, touring in some new territories opened his eyes to the problems people are facing all over the world. Two thousand and fifteen was a great year for shows. I played all over the world, revisited some territories that I hadn't been to for a long time. Um, and, and some great new emerging markets. And, and it also opened my eyes up going to these new territories, the state of the world. And when you become a dad, uh, you really feel the context of that, you know, in terms of what life's like in your world in the club and when you step outside that and the surroundings you're in and how people live. And it really made me think in terms of how much I've taken out of the scene. And I really felt this year was time to pay back. We set out at the beginning of the year to, to make all these records and culminate it with an album that we would sell um, and give all the, all the proceeds to charity. And that's when we decided to hook up with the guys at Warchild. Now they're only a small charity but they've got massive ambitions. They've directly transformed the lives of tens of thousands of kids and campaigned to improve the lives of millions more. I really wouldn't be where I am without the support of you guys. And with your help, we can give something back to Warchild through the proceeds of this album. January marks one of the most exciting events in the dance music calendar, the BPM Festival in Mexico. All eyes turned to Playa del Carmen, and Mark kicked off the year with his first of many tour room live showcases. It's a brilliant, brilliant festival. It's, it's 10 days long, and it's about 100 club shows. We had a brilliant party at Blue Para, and I might have had one or too many uh, shots of Jaeger too much. The first quarter of the year is also the time for Tool Room's biannual London show. Fresh off the heels of a huge rebrand in 2014, this party was an important reflection of the label's new sound. We'd been at Ministry for eight or nine years. We'd done like 38 shows there. So we, we decided to uh, take the leap of faith and move away. And we went to Fire. And um, I think it was really representative as a club of where we were musically. And it was one of the best shows I've done in London in years. The Miami Winter Music Conference closely followed where the entire industry gathers every year. You know, anyone who's ever been to Miami knows what it's, it's all about. And every year we do our, our annual tour room in stereo pool party. Uh, this year we did it at the National, and what a brilliant day. It's one of those gigs where you get there at 11 a.m. in the morning because you want to be there, and, and the whole musical journey and all your mates. And it was just, it was in the top five gigs of the year. After Miami, it's straight back to work. Being no stranger to collaborating in the studio, Mark embarked on a successful series of productions with a young talent from Argentina, Adrian Auer. With a heavy schedule of touring together planned for the year, there was no better time to start some co-productions. It's not that often someone comes along and you think, wow, this kid's got it, you know, he really has got it. Instantly we clicked and we're, good, we're as good friends as we are production partners and um, he came over from Argentina and we got in the studio and boom, you know, we did a track in a day. Uh, effects yeah. Take that down yeah. and we'll bring up the freak up. You know, we create another crossover so it comes up, down, up and then yeah. down. There's nothing you know I mean? better than being in that kind of working situation where you go and you want to be in the studio with someone, you enjoy their company and then the magic just happens. Right, Mikey, let's get this done because we can't um, miss the curry. Yeah, Whatever I'm, happens. I'm rolling, I've been rolling the whole time. All oh, right, really? Oh, yeah. right, okay. <laughs> Instantly falling into a groove with their club records, Mark and Adrian hatch plans for a special project later in the year. I'm very happy with what we are doing together with Mark. We, we are friends now, and, and, and I think we are making something very, very strong. We thought that it could be good to add a vocalist, and well, we, we found Indiana.
Oh, you may or may not notice that I've been in the sun today just for a little bit. We're up in the full crayfish look. Summer saw Mark racking up some serious air miles, spending every weekend outside of the UK. Touring to this extent is demanding, but doing it alongside being a father, a husband, and a friend is just as big of a challenge. It's not a job, it's a lifestyle. You know, you have to give up everything. I mean, I haven't been to my friend's birthday in 15 years, to the point where they don't even invite me anymore, and I, I don't see that as an insult, it's just the amount of dedication you have to give to this to be at the top of your game. It's great and I love it and it's what I always dreamed of. Um, but there is a flip side to that, you know, I, I get home every single minute I can, you know, for example, if I, if I had a show in, say, Spain on Friday night and Finland on Saturday night, I wouldn't fly from Spain to Finland, I'd fly home, you know, for two, or, even if it was for two or three hours, just to spend some time at home with Rupert and give him some degree of normality and regularity to his life, you know. Who's that one? Iron Man. There he is, Iron Man. Hi, Daddy. Hello, big boy. Have you had a good, Have you had a nice day? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What have you been doing? Have you packed all your suitcases? Are you going to be dinosaurs? Um, I'm a shark. A shark. What, in the swimming pool? Oh, okay. Bye, Bye, big boy. I love you loads. Can I have a kiss? Mm, I love you loads. And I'll, uh, I'll speak to you in a bit, yeah? Okay, bye. Bye, I love you. Right, Kip. <laughs> Morning. Morning. <laughs> I've oh, just got up, I'll be five just, minutes. Right, Flip, you got five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, we, we, we can't be that far. We've got to be down there at six. Yeah. Hiya, sorry to keep you waiting. Hi. Hi. I was gone, dead yeah. to the world, Good man. I just came that, uh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> you know, a bit like us, no sleep. Yeah, so we're just on the way to Summer Sound now. Uh, managed to grab an hour and a half sleep, which is cool, which was much needed because it was literally straight from amnesia and then a whole world of flying today via Germany. Half a million times better. Um, and as I was saying earlier, looking forward to, to playing on the brilliant sound system. So uh, day three of the five day marathon. Um, Bill Supercharged now, managed to get some sleep. Got about six hours of sleep last night, which is six hours more than I've had in the last two days. Brilliant night last night, love playing in Finland, wicked. It's a big one today, a whole world of travelling. First, we've got to fly back to London, then we've got to get a train out to Swansea, do the gig there, uh, and then fly uh, from Bristol, so we've got to drive from Bristol, Bristol to Budapest, and there's about a two hour drive from Budapest to Balaton. Do the gig there, we get about 40 minutes sleep and then drive to Vienna. That inventiveness transferred to using a round in which case, you're going to have to make do with the shoe that's on tweet. What you use isn't important again. <laughs> so what the household items that Adam aims to be utilised?
so exhausted. We've literally been up uh, for about 36 hours, 38 hours. We've been to five countries in just over a day and we've had no sleep whatsoever. We've just been, you know, from car to gig to plane to wherever. So, uh, you know, I'm so tired now, my body is literally twitching. DJ is easy. When anyone can put records on and uh, have a good time, that, that, that's, that's easy. The hard part of this is, uh, is a travelling. You know, you go two or three days without any sleep or an hour on the plane, and it's just, you know. So, yeah, I'm going to go home and have a full on man day to myself. Tomorrow, we've got the gym, a sauna, have a swim. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that big time, get myself charged up. And then back at it Wednesday, back in the office Wednesday meeting, studio, and then uh, back on the road on Friday. Back to the UK and back to the grind. Summer is a busy time for Mark's label tool room. With 20 staff and hundreds of things to do, Mark's average day at HQ is a hectic mix of meetings, A&R, business and debate. We're on my way to the office now. I've um, got a mad busy day. I mean, I only get to the office one or two days a week. Um, I'd like to go there more, but you know, there's only seven days in a week. Um, and when I do go in, it's pretty full on. Most of the guys who've worked for us have been there since day one. You know, no one really leaves to them because it's just a great vibe. It's a real family thing. Uh, and talking to family, it's actually headed up by my brother. He's the MD, um, which can uh, cause a bit of friction at times if you're if you ever been to the tour office, but it's good, you know, we get things done and it's cool, you know, when you work with your family, one minute you can have a massive argument, the next minute um, I'm making him a cup of tea. You know, no, but we could, no, hang on. I know what you're saying, but that, you, that, that's my new shit, like you said earlier. No, so that, that's how we, can't, we can't have the radio, we can't go to Sirius and go, because it works for the DJ, call it the Mark Knight Show, but then put pam pat out somewhere else and call it the Tourism Show. That. What are you saying? It's called Mark Knight Presents, it's called Tourism, yeah, it's called Tourism Radio. Yeah? It's called Mark Knight Present. What? Hang on, let's get to the crux of it. What the f hell is it called? I'll call it Mikey White's radio show if you have to, if it makes it gets us more. Can you do it? Mark? Can you do it, Mikey? But Boy, that look, do it. Yeah. So a day in the life of Mark Knight is pretty crazy. You're wearing about five or six different hats. You're a producer, DJ, label owner. Uh, you're AR. We're on a management company. I uh, write for other acts. So when I get into the office, it is just a, like an explosion, you know. But I love it. I absolutely buzz off it. <laughs> this, this is brilliant. Who's this? Rene and Freak. I've been playing this all the time. This is wicked. Yeah. No, this is us. This is us all day long. And this is his big record for next year. Right. Personally, I've been, I've been, I've been playing this out. Pick this instant. Um. I took a sn oh, uh, balls out. <laughs> also to come in this week's show, Jackie, that's the DJ, not the comic, is taking over hour two for the guest mix. Looking forward to that. Never seen me alive. <laughs> 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 oh, no summer would be complete without a gig in Ibiza. 2015 saw Mark play a series of shows at Amnesia, Sankey's, and Space. Best gig of Ibiza, I'd say probably Carl Cox. <laughs> Guy's just an institution in dance music, uh, and when you get the opportunity to play from him, I mean, it's just one of the best gigs. I played Space 21 times in one summer, and I love that club. I mean, I absolutely love playing there, and I know it inside out. But playing on Carl Cox's night, like, it's special. I've never seen anything like that before. Over to the east, it's generally uh, lightning to f. and it's the best night at all. <laughs> I've always wanted to do an album of uh, house classics in that pub style. You remember like Reeves and Mortimer used to do it? Yeah, shooting stars. Rock me with your little frequency. 
Every year in October, the dance music industry congregates in Amsterdam for ADE, the most productive conference in the calendar. It's often where deals are done and new ideas are put into play. One of the highlights of any year is ADE. It's a great opportunity to catch up with everyone. Good to see you, man. You too, are you well? Very good, man. Very good. Wouldn't be ADE without this weather, right? <laughs> that party was good last night. It was good fun, man. Yeah, good really energy, good fun. Be ADE is selfie. Yeah, man. It's blue. Oh. Hey, man. And this year, it was it was to reaffirm, you know, what the new tour and family was. We launched a concept called T1. It's taking the new pool of acts that we have. And what we decided to do was to kind of put all the names in the hat and say, right, let's put together some co-productions, you know, to make it really feel like a family. We did a party uh, where everyone played, played back to back, and it was a brilliant success. I mean, ADE was also the, the, the time when we launched the Academy, um, which is very much part of our, our plans moving forward. It's about making bespoke courses for Tech House, House Techno. You know, we've amassed so much knowledge in the last 12 years in terms of production and A&R, uh, and we want to to give back in a way where we can teach people about Tech House. It was a great launch pad for for the Academy. Jason's come straight from Baywatch. Straight... <laughs> <laughs> he just literally ran out of the sea straight onto the plane. Yeah. Every DJ has their favorite place to play in the world, where the energy is just unrivaled from anywhere else on the planet. For Mark, this is Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Now, Bulgaria's a bit of a mad one for me. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how much I love that place. I've been going there for, this will be my 10th year this year, and there is nowhere else in the world, hands down, that I get as much love. It's almost a bit weird, you know, when you're getting to the airport and you've come off an easy jet flight and there are people waiting for you to get off the plane, you're like, me? <laughs> we did something different this year. We um, did a show in uh, Halloween. Um, called The Freak Show, and it was nuts. Bulgaria. Um, I love going there. I love the people there. I love everything about it. Go! <laughs> There's no rules to making music, and any established producer will attest to this. Mark has always been one to let his ideas run on full capacity, and that's not just on the dance floor. So what, a 48 bar tambourine solo, is that what we're saying? Yeah, well, you know, f it, 64. <laughs> so one of the other things I do is I write music for other people, and I've worked in and have been involved in a whole breadth of different projects, going from working with the Black Eyed Peas and David Guetta, Alongside Calvin Harris, we wrote Drinking From The Bottle, right the way through to the other end of the scale, uh, producing Barking, Underworld's last album, and co-producing tracks on Faithless's The Dance album. So you can see I'm involved in a whole variety of different projects. This year with my partner James, we did Whiskey Story, which was the first single off Example's new album. Uh, we wrote Blinkies Don't Give Up On Love. Uh, we worked with Karen Harding on Wonderland. We've done loads of different things. Uh, we had a session with Karen this year and she was fantastic. She has such soulful roots uh, and that's very much where I come from. Basically what we've done today is just come in and look for a nine, a hat, open hat. Yeah, that's today's agenda, nothing more, nothing less. I mean, how drastic, fire off, mate. how drastically wrong was the other one? 
November saw Mark back on the road, this time with an extensive tour of Asia. With no tour manager, it was time for Mark to get behind the camera himself. Okay, so here goes my first ever video diary. Uh, and to be honest, I feel a bit of a tit. Actually, that boat's got exactly the same jumper as me. Check that out. Get out. It's split up. Repping the same f***ing jumper. Heading to Japan. Uh, the first show is in Sapporo. And then we'll go to Shanghai to do the excellent Lola. Then Womb on Sunday, which should be bonkers. And then Monday, uh, Nagoya, and then home. So I'm going me ass on the plane. And hopefully not sit next to that bloke, because we're going to look like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I am now on the plane. And I've got changed. Oh, I've had to in all fairness, uh, in case mate boy turns up. Now we all look like Pizza Express on tour. I tour on my own. I've never had a tour manager. I always do it myself. I just, I'm a big boy. I can plug a USB in and, uh, and, and turn up for a flight occasionally. Eat up to eat and broke down my tooth and I have, I don't think you can see there, I've broken my tooth. And that's organised emergency dentist. It's fing painful. Not the best way to start at all. Morning, morning, morning. Uh, it's now quarter past eleven and I'm well, well late. I'm supposed to be downstairs at eleven. Standard. Had a quick Skype call the little man, he's off to bed, he's got football in the morning, he's all excited. Uh, it's the toughest thing about being away, is missing stuff like that, and I'll give my right arm to be there tomorrow morning. I'm not sure what's going on on this tour. Is this the same geezer who was in the lounge in London? Look, have a look. Following me or what? Final leg of the journey, uh, and you know you're nearly home when you see this man, Taxi Dave. Say hello, Dave. Hi. So it's been a brilliant year, 2015, and I want to thank everyone around me because it's it's a team effort. I mean, there's no way I could do it. Uh, without the great team I have around me. So I want to say thank you to Mark, to, to Miles, to Mikey, to Stu, to George, to all the guys at the office. We've set out to achieve some, some, some big goals this year and I think we've got there. But this isn't about me, this film. This is about War Child. This is about what we can do to help. I mean, dance music is about escapism, but we can't escape the fact there's people out there that need our help. So if you please buy this album, all the proceeds will go to help create a better life for kids who really need it.